Hello, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Zodiac Trading. So today we're going to talk about the Japanese U curve control policy. And today in this video, I will be covering of what is essentially a uh, YCC policy and how we can adapt that policy uh, in predicting the Japanese yen move. And also, I'm going to share my take on Japanese yen and how the Japanese central bank would apply uh, when it's um, uh, against the inflation and also etc. We uh, we will start by you know explaining the YCC policy framework. So basically, the U curve control policy it's an interest rate tool. So unlike the Federal Reserve, Federal Reserve they set a short-term interest rate target um, for the economy. So basically, the financial bank, commercial banks would be listening to the Federal Reserve. And then, uh, however, the difference is that the, in the U-curve control policy framework, you are uh, going to set up a long-term interest rate target. And by telling uh, the market, the financial market, and also the speculators and institutions that you're going to maintain a long-term interest rate uh, target. That means you're going to buy whatever amount or sell whatever amount of bonds to reach that target. That basically means if uh, the bond traders wish to speculate or maybe hedge funds wish to speculate on the long-term yield or maybe the bond prices, the, the, the central bank would most likely to intervene. And the central bank, in this case, uh, the Bank of Japan would intervene um, if any speculators would like to um, take advantage of the current situation. So in this scenario, why, why is Japan applying the YCC policy? It's because we all know the Japanese economy has gone through more than, you know, one a very long decade of economic recession and also uh, deflationary economic pressure in time. So it's difficult for Japanese economy to revive itself. So in order to prevent such catastrophic consequences, the Bank of Japan decided to uh, introduce the YCC and it started from around like 2014 and something like that and they, uh, the central bank started to set up the long-term interest rate target uh, and also say that the, the, the Bank of Japan would buy whatever amount of the bonds and they will uh, you know maintain that interest rate and also they're going to maintain that you curve um, at all costs. So, as a matter of, of as a matter of fact, and also as a consequence, that we are seeing uh, the bonds, the 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 Jap Japanese ten-year bond yield was suppressed at such a level was nearly uh, around zero. So it's you know maybe twenty-five basis point and. Minus 25 basis point around that. So it's a very minimal volatility when it comes to the bond yield. So the good thing about maintaining a long term bond yield is that you'd be able to suppress, you'd be able to um, suppress the, the bond volatility in the same time, uh, forcing the liquidity and also the money flows to. Uh, the equity side. So you will have more of the regulation kind of effect uh, to really help boost the economy system. Because we all know um, Japan, because in order to uh, in order to fight against that deflationary power, so you can see that Japan has a problem of maintaining a healthy 2% of inflation for a very long time. So the central bank decide Yes, we can lower the interest rate um, to zero percent, or maybe maybe below that. So Japanese 
as the is basically the first developing developed country economy to enter that negative interest rate regime. So uh, consequently, uh, there is no more room for the Japan economy to get you know any more the rate uh, any more uh, easing. To be honest, so you cannot actually lower the interest rate from minus maybe minus one minus one percent to minus two percent. It doesn't make any sense. So how do you get more easing when your rate is already negative? So the problem as the results would be applying that YCC framework, because by adapting that YCC framework, you're encouraging money to flow to the equity side. So commercial banks and financial institutions would likely to get, you know, be having more of the risk sentiment instead of, you know, using these liquidity to buy bonds for 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 juicy yields. So that situation has been changed up to recently because the right now the Bank of Japan uh, decided that they will go for one percent of ten-year government bond yield. And they claim that they will be flexible of of the policy of the YCC, which means that the Japanese uh, central bank will likely to stay easing, and also in the same time, uh, they are reluctant to let the speculators and volatility takers to take advantage of the status quo, and also by setting up a long-term interest rate target. They are trying to stop the yen from falling, but uh, from uh, you know from falling below maybe like the dollar yen, which is uh, 160. So um, to sum everything up, right now, uh, what Japan's government trying to do is to maintain that two percent inflation in the same time, because the central bank, uh, the Fed, is entering a restrictive policy regime. So that's why you have uh, a lot of you have strong dollar, you have inflating ex, uh, import import stuff. Things are getting more expensive. You have high inflation, but at the same time, you have to uh, you have to in the same time you 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 should be able to keep the the interest rate low enough, maintain that around like zero percent, but in the same time you're encouraging. You are losing a little bit out of YCC because previously you're setting your long-term yield target around that, you know, zero. Right now you're sitting up to one percent, and then you're leaving some space for the future, potential future to to really get rid of YCC framework. But right now, Weta probably think it's not about the right time, and he's. Like you know, he doesn't really like speculators. He doesn't want speculators to keep speculating the Japanese yen. But at the same time, you have very strong dollar. That means the capital will most likely flow to dollar. In the same time, that will, as a matter of effect, will result in a depreciating yen. And at the same time, uh, he set up a long-term interest rate target, so a the Japanese yen would be any lower. So it's. To sum everything up, I think right now Japanese central bank is applying a tactic, a strategic behavior against that rate setting. So my take in these policies, I think that in you know Japan governments right now trying to deal with this inflation problem, and um, that's mo most likely if if the central bank is not strong and uh, intervene with the currency. That might be more people betting against yen. More volatility would, you know, be short yen, and that's going to become a problem for the Japanese economy system. So it would be a new challenge for Weda. So he has to decide either he's going for a total YCC, gonna tweak, and at the same time he has to be aware of that inflation domestically. You know, you have to beware of that inflation may, may, may lose out of control, right? Certain amount of inflation is good for economy, but if the inflation is out of control, 
that means it will probably hurt the Japanese economy in the long run. So right now, let's see what Weda would be doing. So that's sum everything up. If you guys like enjoying the content of video, please subscribe and press that like button. And if you have any comments, please leave it in the comment section. You know, I, as a macro trader, I trade every day and I observe uh, multi cross market currency and different assets across the regime. So I'm welcome of any kind of view. So we can, you know, discuss our view in our in com commentary sections. Or you can also join our pay like uh, our uh, exclusive exclusive membership uh, program. Okay, so I will see you in the next video. I was goodbye.